when you fly into San Francisco and you take the BART to Oakland, you get up on the Coliseum stop as the Mariners get in set for the final game of this series. The Mariners and the Oakland A's a chance for a three game series sweep before a lengthy 10 game homestand begins tomorrow night at beautiful Safeco Field. Happy as always, you can join us for Mariners baseball right here on Root Sports. Aaron Goltz with Mike Flowers, our entire Root Sports crew, as we take a look at the Jack of the Box starting lineup for the Mariners. And Gene Segura going to lead things off. Mitch Hanniger back in the lineup. He is hitting third. Did not play yesterday after being hit on the arm, but back in the lineup. Daniel Vogel back will hit six, giving Ryan Healy an afternoon off. Andrew Romine and David Freitas will round out the nine for the Mariners. For Josh Lucas, this will be his first major league start. A couple of relief appearances this year. He's pitched well. In six and two thirds, he has seven strikeouts. Opponents hitting just 182 against him. His average fastball, 91 miles an hour, and he will throw his slider a lot. Defense for the A's. Dustin Fowler getting his second start in the series out in center field. Jed Lowry at second base, and Bruce Maxwell getting his first start. He will do the catching. Gene going with the high socks on a getaway day game. Fouls back to the first pitch for strike one. Well, the situation for Bob Melvin first and his pitch. starting rotation is fairly dire, which explains why Josh Lucas is making his first professional start since the low minors in 2013. This is only his eighth career big league appearance. I noticed before the first game of this series that he was having a long conversation with Scott Service. Mentioned pitching and injury Scott <laughs> certainly aware of what that's like over the last couple of years. Let's say two man therapy group <laughs> maybe. Each one was sitting on a couch <laughs> still nothing to do. But the story for the A's on their last road trip which was a very successful road trip seven to three out east. On consecutive days they lost Andrew Triggs and then Brett Anderson two starting pitchers back to back games to the DL. And helps explain why Josh Lucas is getting the start today. Up the middle. And a fine center field for a base hit. Segura after a rare 0 for last night right away on base a leadoff single. And again another slider off the plate that is such a tough pitch you could see Maxwell the catcher he was actually going to block it it was going to be in the dirt and he still picks up a base hit. Well, how many times have we said it? <laughs> One of the best bad ball hitters. And when that happens, you end up putting a lot of balls in play. And for Segura, more times than not, they end up being base hits. Similar slider to him in the first game of this series in the 10th inning. Ended up picking up a base hit, scored on a double by Heredia. But a pitch again that was well off the plate and down. And I think that was going to hit the dirt. Hand eye coordination. Like nobody. <laughs> Strong night last night for Heredia. Two for four scored the game's only run. Last night we gave the updated numbers right on right for Heredia. They look even better today. Now batting 333 against right handers. An on base percentage of exactly 500. It was difficult news hearing that we were going to lose D Gordon to the 10 day DL just because of the impact he's had on this club but Heredia moves up to hitting second Segura now leading off and they've had an impact in both of the games as far as the Mariners winning the games it was Heredia who scored the one run in the ball game last night and then he drove in the go ahead run which was Segura in the 10th inning in the first game of this series. What an impact he's had Segura at first. Very close one and two. And we were talking about the only run of the ball game last night on a ball put in play by Kyle Seeger. It was a fielder's choice E6, and we've been told that the official scorekeeper has submitted that play to Elias to see if, in fact, Seeger should be rewarded with an RBI. He has not been given an RBI at this point. Most of us upstairs were in agreement that that deserved a run batted in. 
I, I just don't think that you could assume that even if he was the shortstop Simeon was going to try to make a play at the plate it was a contact play with good speed in Aredia and he was going to his left it was going to be a tag play and I don't think you can assume there was going to be an out made there so I think he deserves an RBI breaks his bat was talking about Aredia last night and I had a question for Edgar Martinez if he missed the game last night and Basically what I wanted to know is just Heredia in his eye at the plate and his ability to take walks work counts um, obviously use the entire field and if this is a conversation that he and Edgar have been having and Edgar told me he said no he's been doing that from day one he's had the ability to understand the strike zone um, from day one and it's really helped them and it's been a bit surprising to watch him against the right handers we saw the numbers at 333 batting average into the gap over towards left center Segura a little stumble but he's making his way to third. And another base hit against a right hander so. He has been hot. It was awkward watching Segura go around second base. You can see him he's still stretching out at third but a solid base hit on a breaking ball that's down probably at the bottom of the strike zone it was definitely on the plate Segura going around second. What a great situation for the Mariners here in the first. Consecutive singles to begin the ball game. Good to see Mitch Hanniger back in the lineup. Hit in the arm of the first game of the series. Missed last night's game. I asked Scott Service if he would be in the lineup today, and he said that he hoped so. This was yesterday. He said if not, that he would be in the lineup Friday night for sure. But I'm sure Mitch showed up at the ballpark and wanted to be in the lineup. 36 RBIs for Mitch. That leads the club. Two and home. Of course, Mitch from around these parts went to high school in San Jose. His mom, dad, Walt, and Judy in the ballpark tonight, along with plenty of friends and family. That's mom of the Mariners jersey. A Hanniger jersey, no surprise. And the driver's seat 3 and 0. Oh. Luke is a tall right hander, 6'6, 185. Melvin saying that hope is around 50 pitches for Josh Lucas today. So this is, in essence, a bullpen day for the A's. His last time out in relief against Toronto, he threw exactly 50 pitches. Swing in 3 and 0. Oh. Nelly on deck. Segura at third. Heredia at first. Nobody out. Mariners a chance to jump on the board early today. Mariners entering this one with all kinds of momentum. Now a season best 10 games over 500. Also a season best five game winning streak. Like it is the longest active winning streak in the majors. Clubhouse leaders leader rather and runs batted in Mitch Hanniger. Bases are packed. Very close pitch there Hanniger aboard. Each of the first three men reaching. C.B. Buckner is the home plate umpire and it appears it's going to be a fairly tight strike zone number of pitches so far that have been borderline call all called balls. So if you're hitting make him get the ball on the plate. Well a chance for Nelly's 10th career grand slam. I would say those are pretty good numbers. <laughs> One. After
after winning the first two games of this series the Mariners now six and two this year against the A's. Mariners winning each of the first two series at Safeco Field against Oakland they have already locked down a series win with the win last night. Well, Lucas right back to the slider. You mentioned Hanniger missed the game yesterday because he was hit by a pitch. Nelson missed the first game of this series because he was also hit on the elbow. He was back in the lineup last night. On his speed on the base paths for Nelly. Gets ahead two and one. Pitch will be number 20 for Lucas. Yet to record an out. The 2 2. Well now, full count with the bases loaded. He looks hoping for a little run support. Time called. Base is loaded, nobody out. Here comes the payoff. Ground ball, Chapman. Over to Lowry. Out at first, double play, but a run does score. That is Segura. Two outs of the Mariners. On the board first. So no RBI for Nelson. That pitch was down and away from him. Hit towards the end of the bat. And a routine double play. Mira Supermo and again look at the pitch his slider he will throw it at any time so you have the bases loaded with a full count and he still goes to the slider. On one on Seeger. Rob Nodine talking with Nelly. Like Nelson maybe slipped out of the box, making his way to first base. 0 oh 2. Shipped on for Kyle. Two outs. Already at third base. Let's go back to Nelson Cruz out of the box on the double play. Slipped a couple of times. Once with his left foot and then his right foot hit the plate and he slipped right off the plate. Seeger down the line a foul ball. Meanwhile, for Lucas, he is halfway through his projected pitch limit here in the first inning. The one two. Lucas thinking he got strike three was not particularly close. Alive. Nice 
already at 90 feet from home. Another 2 2. Strike three called. And that ends the top of the first. The Mariners do get a run. They were wishing for more. They take the lead at the bottom of the first inning. Mariners lead it one to nothing as we take a look at the A's starting lineup. Matt Joyce is going to lead things off. Then it'll be Matt Olson hitting cleanup on a home run for him last year. Bruce Maxwell getting his first start of the series. He will round out the nine for the A's. For Felix Hernandez, his average fastball at 90 miles an hour. Slider curve change up to go with it. Five and three record, five and a half ERA, 49 strikeouts and 55 and a third. Opponents hitting 256 against Felix. And for the defense, Mitch Hanniger back in the lineup. He will be in right field. Daniel Vogelback giving Ryan Healy the afternoon off at first base, and David Freitas will do the catching. Now the first pitch out to left center. Joyce finds a base hit. Cut off by Gamble. Joyce not wasting any time. It's been interesting watching clubs throughout the years really against Felix whether they're going to be aggressive or try to be patient and wait him out. I would say over the last few years the A's have been more on the aggressive side and Matt Joyce swinging at the first pitch. Good play by Ben Gamble in left field to cut it off and hold it to a single. Lead off man aboard for Simeon. Simeon with good numbers against Felix in his career, hitting 333 with four home runs. It's kind of funny, isn't it, to think about it? The A's being an aggressive team in recent years. Wasn't it supposed to be the other way around for the A's for many years? I feel like it was that long ago where they would stand up there it seemed try to get to a full count in every at bat but that has not been the case over the last few years. I think as the velocity has gone up and the strikeout numbers are what they are they decided to be more aggressive early. And Bob Melvin was talking about that the other day and this is not something just unique to the A's or Bob Melvin, but he was saying that now they are hoping that their hitters are aggressive in the zone, right? Very picky about what pitch they want to hit. Something that Edgar talks about all the time. I don't think Edgar cares if it's the first pitch, third pitch, fifth pitch, as long as it's a pitch that you can handle in the strike zone, go ahead and swing at it. Felix is one two. Now Felix a chance to climb the leaderboards today. He is six strikeouts shy of passing Sandy Koufax 
on the all time strikeout list. Felix right now 46th all time. Once again the one two. This has faced the A's a couple of times this year. One on one record for him. Felix, six innings, six and a third innings as well against the A's in his previous two starts. He struck out seven each time. Another pitch in the dirt. Felix's curveball. Felix has actually thrown his curveball more than his changeup this year. And that Mel Stottlemyre has talked about with Felix wanting to use all of his pitches, including his slider. His changeup still his best pitch. Opponents hitting just 167 against the changeup. Now, a couple of pitches ago, Buckner, CB Buckner walked in front of the plate saying that it was one and two. Which would now make it two and two. For what it's worth, I've got it at three and two. <laughs> so maybe we'll find out, maybe we won't. Pat Seeger, we'll never know. Into left field. Joyce now making the turn. Dropped by Kyle, and now Simeon into second. Couple of minutes scoring position. We'll have to take a closer look at this because it looked as if Gamble was over there in pretty good shape. Solid base hit by Simeon and then Joyce was slowing down coming around second and took off. I'm not sure if Gamble put his head down or what happened. No he gets the ball in right away. Kyle trying to get back to the base and the throw just wide of the bag. It's right on the cut of the grass and comes up on Kyle so he's not able to handle it. But Ben gets over there in good shape and gets the ball in right away. Just an aggressive play by Joyce. Two in scoring position, nobody out. He watched the pregame show for Felix this year. First inning has been the problem inning for him. ERA of nine. Once he gets through the first, he typically will settle down. Give you a good ball game. The A's being aggressive. Including Lowry, who's been their best hitter this year. Well, for Felix on the season, to your point, Mike, he's allowed 34 earned runs. 11 of those earned runs have come in the first inning. Working with Joyce at third, Simeon at second. A catch. Joyce coming home. And we are tied. That leadoff single comes all the way around to score. One apiece. Something that has helped the Mariners in the first two games is aggressive base running, and it's paid off for the A's. Or Lowry now, 38 RBIs. And Ben has been busy in left field with the first three batters. One out, Sambian still out at second base. Here's Matt Olson, the first baseman. Missing 2 and 0. Oh. 
Gets a strike over with the curve, two and one. That has been one of the changes for Felix able to go to his curveball or his slider when he's behind in the count. Shift on for Olsen. And Felix behind three and one. Chapman on deck. Hayes Young, third baseman. Go ahead, run Simeon with pretty good speed at second base. Fastball off the outside corner. Let's see if he goes to his changeup, his best pitch. Strike three called. Curveball this time. Gets Olsen. And a little bit of help for Felix. He will certainly take it. Thought maybe he would go to the changeup. It's an off speed pitch. It is the curveball. David Frayn is framing it on the outside corner. I have a feeling Josh Lucas is saying, hey, wh wh where was that in the top of the first inning? Works in the Mar Mariners' favor. Well, Josh Lucas is not Felix Hernandez. I think that's fair to say. Two outs now. Simeon still out at second base. Down ball to Seeger. Mike, how many times do you remember that happening? Whether it was when you were a young player or a veteran player, when you are facing a guy who is a perennial all star, maybe a guy who is ticketed for Cooperstown, and all of a sudden, that strike zone looks a little bit different. It, it, it's changed, I think, over the years. More than anything, because of the tracer, and the umpires are, are aware of that, and I think the strike zone is a little bit tighter because of it, but I think that there still is room. For somebody's reputation to get pitches, and Felix certainly has earned that over his career. I learned it right away as a rookie facing Jack Morris for the first time. <laughs> Jack just looked mean. He's a nice guy, but he didn't seem like it. I didn't think that he particularly liked me very much. I think I think every hitter said that. <laughs> I think it was personal. <laughs> and a great split. I was going to say, did he throw your splitter? Yes. In my opinion, off the plate away, but. <laughs> <laughs> but who are you to say? <laughs> but it was a strikeout looking. <laughs> Twenty two pitches here in the first inning for Felix. On a foul ball. Both starters throwing a lot of pitches. Now twenty three pitches. Fourteen strikes for Felix. Pitch number six to Chapman. Full count. And Mike, you mentioned it already. Fastball command, something Mel was talking about, especially early. In the first inning. Yes, more than any other part of the game. It's been an issue for Felix. I think sometimes, and not just with Felix, but most pitchers, starting pitchers, they're trying to keep their fastball out of the middle of the plate the first inning, just trying to get a feel for it. Very close because they don't want to get hurt and then they end up in hitters counts. Yeah, first base open right there. Felix was not going to give in to him. Came back with another breaking ball to walk him. One of the things to keep in mind is 
for the A's. They're one of the top strikeout teams in the American League. And we have seen that in the series. Mariners pitching able to get out of some jams with the strikeout. Two on, two out for Stephen Piscotti. Put on a show in right field last night. On the first pitch, high drive out to left. Gamble. Heredia can't make the catch. Simeon coming around to score. Chapman on his heels. Wall ball double with two outs. Scores two off the bat of Stephen Piscotti. And it's a crooked number in the first of the A's. They lead it three to one. Another aggressive hitter. First pitch, fastball on the inside corner. Just above the knees. Out of the reach of Heredia. And the A's. Very aggressive here in the first. Strike one to Fowler. Now the A's had entered today scoring two runs or fewer in seven consecutive home games and scored three times here in the first. Piscotti at second. Time called by Freitas. The 0 2. Little loop. Dunks in. Base hit. Piscotti rounding third. Campbell's got no chance to get him. It's 4 1 Oakland. And Mel Stottlemyer on his way out to the mound to have a conversation with Felix. This pitch going to be middle in. I think he ends up jamming him. He does. It's right off the pine tar. Soft line drive into left field. No chance for Gamble to throw Piscotti out at the plate. With two outs, he gets a great jump. He runs well. Next pitch will be number 30 for Felix. He's facing the eighth batter of the inning. It's Mark Canna, the aging today for Bob Melvin. Batting in the eighth position, designated hitter, number 20, Mark Canna. Ball in the dirt, ball one. Thirty pitches now for Felix in this first inning. Seeger, low backhand, over to Romine. To finally end the first. A's have taken a 4 1 lead.
Seattle Mariners baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by the Emerald Queen Casino, presenting R&B's Kenny Babyface Edmonds, June 22nd. Tickets at emeraldqueen.com. By Safeco Insurance, find a local agent at safeco.com. Do more. And by your local Ford stores. Surfing off Santa Cruz. A little cool day today here at the Coliseum. Temperature is just under 60 degrees. It's been that way all series long. Then the Vogelback leads it off for the Mariners, now trailing 4 to 1. Both starting pitchers laboring through the first. Lucas, 28 pitches. Meanwhile, Felix, 31. One two. And last night, John Andrioli was one of the headliners in a Mariners win, and John and Daniel Vogelback know each other very well. We're both up in AAA together in the Cubs system. John getting to take this one as a, in as a fan, at least for right now. Daniel recalled for the first game of this series. Had a pretty good night. He was on base three times, one for two with a couple of walks and scored a run. And the Andrew Oldie family. Back here for game three. Saw them here last night. Making the long flight from the Boston area. John from Worcester, Massachusetts. Had a chance to congratulate John's dad last night on our way out of the ballpark. And what an exciting time for that family. Waited a while for John to get to the big leagues. What a journey. Up high ball four lead off walk. Second walk today from Josh Lucas. Seven. Here's Ben Gamble. Left fielder, number 16, ben we were talking last night about John and the lineage of athletes in his family. His father played in the NFL, most notably for the Patriots. John making his major league debut last night with the Mariners. And for John Andrioli, his grandfather, a gentleman by the name of Fran O'Brien, longtime baseball and basketball coach at a school known for well, degrees more than anything, MIT. <laughs> Olsen spins over to Simeon at the first base. Double play. 3-6-3 double play. Tough double play to turn typically, but this is a nice easy hop for Olsen, able to get back in plenty of time. Simeon a strong arm. Two outs for Andrew Romine. Romine getting the start at second base this afternoon. Less than 40 at bats so far this year for Romine. Now Andrew Oldie's grandfather had such an impact at MIT as a coach. They actually named the baseball field after him. Helped lead in MIT to their first ever NCAA tournament. Also coached in the Cape League. Premier Woodbent Collegiate Summer League. Three and oh. That's something I wish I had done. Had the opportunity to play in the Cape. Now you were. You were going to play in, in Alaska. In Alaska, yeah. that's right. Yeah. I ended up signing instead. Well, I can tell you this much: it is a scout's dream. <laughs> Would have to be. 
Some of the best amateur talent all within a 45 minutes drive of one ballpark to another and a vacation paradise in the heart of the summer. Full count to Romine. You spent one summer spent one summer there. With the born Braves in the Cape League. I never saw a beach one time Mike. <laughs> Just a president think not. about. Two out walk third walk second this inning from Lucas. Well there's fun for the entire family at Safeco Field on Sunday all kids 14 and under will receive a Mike Zanino lunch bag courtesy of Aquafina. Then following the game all fans will be able to watch the classic baseball film The Sandlot on Mariners Vision. Just go to Mariners.com to pick up your tickets. Scott Emerson pitching coach for the A's out at the mound. Having a conversation with Lucas. 43 pitches 24 strikes for him. Manning in the ninth position. The catcher. Number 30. No, David David you, you were busy doing other things. Is that what you're trying to yeah, say? Yeah, that's exactly right. It was. I guess I had more dreams of leisure. <laughs> 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 Didn't work out that way. That big paycheck you were getting there. Why not? Yeah, exactly. Freitas with two outs and a man aboard. I found a landscaping job on Craigslist that summer which seemed to occupy the majority of my time <laughs> until my online only broadcasts which were well received by dozens there goes Romine throw to second Romine safe great slide I think the throw beat him but he was able it looked like he was able to take his left hand away and reach around the tag with his right hand. I, th I think they had it right. Primera Supermo and the tag by Lowry the second baseman. Yeah. No challenge. Great slide. Very close pitch, one and two. Talking to Scott about his lineup and, and the injuries that they've been dealing with, he felt that they had to be more aggressive. So, not a surprise that Romine ended up stealing. In this series, and also put on a hit and run. It's the contact play that won the game for him last night. Now, on the fairly lengthy bus ride home from the Coliseum to downtown San Francisco, did, did I overhear you telling Riz about the contact play, Mike? Did I? You were drawing, uh, there was a whiteboard involved in diagrams, and you're proving a point. That did not happen. <laughs> <laughs> Thought you were making your case fairly clear to him. Off the hands into right field, base hit, a roll mine around in third. Freitas coming up with an RBI base hit with two outs in the second. 4 2 Oakland. Good to see the Mariners get a base hit with runners in scoring position and a stolen base pays off. Inside out swing. It was a breaking ball, but it was on the inside corner and he lines it over the second baseman's head. For those that don't know, Rick and I have had a debate over the contact play. Well, for, for the, the better part of 12 couple years. Of decades. <laughs> Chris Hatcher getting loose. He is he is vehemently anti contact play. Correct. Really under no circumstance ever ever whatsoever. Never good time for it. Never. 
So I only assume that when the only run of the ball game and a win for the Mariners came home, and maybe you would be discussing that with him slightly. Well, when we were doing the roundtable on the postgame show on the radio side, he acknowledged it, so I thought that was, that was enough. That was big of him. Yep. One and two. If you missed the base hit from Gene Segura his first time up, and he scored the first run of the game, it was on a slider that was in the other batter's box that the catcher was going to try to block. Basically hit it just before it hit the ground. Chopper to Simeon. To end the inning. The Romine scoring after a two out of walk. Freight is driving him home. Mariners down 4 2. Four two A's as we move to the bottom of the second. We'll take a look, Mike, at our Coors Banquet timeless moment. This day back in '95, Flower Power ties the Mariners' record eight RBIs. Mike, now, I thought I would assume that that was a grand slam day for Mike Flowers. No, maybe the knuckleballer Tim Wakefield up on the mound. No, not a couple of doubles, two run homer. Derek Lilliquist rang a bell. Yes, left-hander. Well, that's who you took yard that day. And the center. Heredia making a catch. Quick out number one. Maxwell retired. A couple of interesting things about that that day. And, and I appreciate you not bringing it up, but I will. I was struggling a little bit going into that game, Aaron. It's, it's, it's one of the reasons why now doing this job when hitters get off to a slow start, I, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> going into that game, I think you said I was hitting 179. You know, I think that was <laughs> I think that was after what you did that day. <laughs> <laughs> it may have been. But I can tell you, going to the ballpark, I thought this would this would be a good time for me to do something today. <laughs> I think Lou was getting impatient. But that was also the game where I had four hits. I had four hits in that game and I was a single away from the, the cycle. And a couple of doubles, a triple, and a home run. See, I love the cycle as much as anybody else, but th that's a better day than hitting for the cycle. That goes without saying. I would agree. And yet we glorify the cycle like this thing that every hitter is chasing that they just happen to run into, if ever. There are only a few of us that have done it. <laughs> I, I, I heard the us part there, by the way. Two outs. A couple of quick outs for Felix. That's what he needed. 31 pitches in the first. Yeah. But A.D., Mr. Mariner, you and Mike Cameron. With eight RBIs. Eight ribbies. Yeah. Cameron, of course, the... You know what? I was about to say the four-homer game, but I don't think... I don't think... I don't think that that was... His eight RBI game. I think I've made that assumption 
wrongly in the past. I mean, you would think that that would be an eight RBI game if you're going to have one, but I don't think that's the case. One to nothing to Simeon. I know it's great to see Alvin in spring training. Alvin Davis, Mr. Mariner, in the spring training. I had a chance to work a telecast with him, too, which was fun. Hopefully, we'll see him sometime over the course of the summer in Safeco Field. Sure hope so. My crack research. Getting on top of the Mike Cameron RBI mystery. The four home run game? Yes. Four RBIs. Boone clearing the bases a couple of times before <laughs> him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two outs, three and one to Simeon. I believe that was in Chicago. It was. Hanniger in right field, drifting out of the track. Good inning. At one, two, three, bottom of the second, exactly what Felix is looking for. Seattle Mariners baseball on route sports is brought to you by Safeco Insurance. Find a local agent at Safeco.com. Do more. Another look at the shores of Santa Cruz. 4-2 A's. We start the top of the third. New pitcher up on the mound. Chris Hatcher. Fires across the first pitch strike to Guillermo Heredia. 15 appearances, 3 and 1 record, ERA over 5, 11 strikeouts, 8 walks in 15 and 2 thirds. He can get wild at times, giving up 4 home runs in 15 and 2 thirds. Hey. Fastball cutter, slider, split for him, his average fastball 94 miles an hour. Guillermo with a base hit his first time up. For Heredia, that was just another hit against Heredia. Okay, drink today, 333 against right handers.
Plays off two and two. Stung to left, but right to Joyce. One down. Well, tomorrow, the Mariners back home beginning a 10 game homestand. Our CenturyLink, what's next? Fernando Romero making his fifth start of the season, off to a good beginning for the Twins this year. And what a great way to open up a homestand. James Paxton up on the mound, making his 11th start. His ERA just continues to go down, down, and further south. Coming off a complete game. That is going to be a great pitching matchup. Gonna be tough to pick up hits. Look at those two batting averages against both the pitchers. James has been on a great run lately. You know, on July 1st at Safeco Field, the Mariners have always had some of the most creative bobbleheads in the business. And on July the 1st, Mike, it is the James Paxton bobblehead. With the bald eagle on the shoulder. So that'll be one of the most desired collectibles that in the game. That's fantastic. Two out of Hanniger. You know, Mike, as we take a look at our world calendar, July 1st is also Canada Day. Coincidence? <laughs> Sometimes things line up, Aaron. Two and two. I don't know. I think Greg Green's got that global calendar up on his wall. He would knows, not, he knows what's not going be, on. Would not be surprised. I still cannot get over how well James handled that situation with the Eagle. Did you ever think you would say that sentence in your life? No. <laughs> no. No, I did not. I mean, think think about what you just said. Well, at the time, I, even when it was going on, I, I was in shock by the whole thing, what was happening with it. And James was just as casual as James typically is. Right out to right field. The Scotty there for out number two. Let's just say it's been an eventful season so far for James. In a very good way. We had an eagle in the maple grove, didn't we? There was. Uh, you know what happened, though? No. There was the enormous bald eagle in the maple grove. By the way, this conversation just continues to get better. And the guys did some bartering, and that bald eagle is now in the clubhouse. This is like the swellment, right? That does not surprise me. <laughs> and for those who didn't see it, because it was there for, I believe, only one game, I'm sure the fine residents of the Maple Grove will be correcting us here for wrong. But it was an enormous stuffed animal that was a bald eagle, and that was a must have for the guys in the dugout. One, two, three, top of the third. We go to the home half, 4 2 Oakland.
Going to the game, it's a quick and easy trip on the Sounder train, Link Light Rail, and the ST Express buses. Plan your trip at soundtransit.org. And there's no better way to ride from San Francisco to the Coliseum than on the BART. A little me time in. I think those are real people or actors. <laughs> what do you think? There's no way they got hired as actors. <laughs> there is Lowry. You have some standards. Right side, low pick, Romine, a throw to first base. That is not an easy looking play. Especially for a guy who's not out there every day. Well, this is a great play. The range, he puts a lot on this throw. Now, just like in the second, a quick beginning for Felix. Here in the bottom of the third. One out, one and out to Olsen. Now, Mike, it did, it did not take long. I was anticipating getting either confirmation or correction from the Maple Grove. Yes. And? Yes, the Mariners did barter for that bald eagle for a, quote, non-disclosed price. <laughs> Off the record. I like it. They had a good crowd out there for him. You're right. They really did. Mm -hmm. The 3 1. Up the middle. Segura lined up perfectly for it. Now, number two. Well, Mariners fans will have four straight chances to score select $15 bleacher and view level and 30 main and club level seats when the Rangers visit starting Monday. It's all part of the Mariners value games presented by BECU. Head to Mariners.com slash value for tickets. What a great program this year. 25 BECU value games overall this season. And a good run of them in a row. Here's Chapman. By the way, have you heard, Mike, of the, the name of the actual maple tree? In the Maple Grove, do you know the name of the tree? The tree has a name. The tree has a name. I think you'll like it. Now, th th this was. It has something to do with Rick, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it absolutely does. Yes, yeah, I thought so. It is Stick Riz. Stick Riz. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I gotta say, last year when, when Rick, I was there when Rick learned of the name. He was a little, I, he was mostly very flattered. He should be. Yeah. Yeah. He was the first to point out that not many have had a tree named after them. <laughs> well, I mean, pretty short list. And then he just swelled with pride, as he should. Has, has, he, has he been out there for the photo shoot yet? Ooh, I don't think that's happened. That has to happen, right? Chapman needing some attention. Foul ball off of his foot. Right off the toe, it looked like. You know, Chapman, a, a rare guy who doesn't wear any form of padding. No elbow pad, no shin, no nothing. Looks like he's all right. <laughs> There's Rick. Well, now, timing could have been a little better. It was an early call time today. Still nothing in two. Right. 
today it's a travel day going home which is great and I happen to sit next to Rick on the plane so maybe that's a conversation I will have with him see if we can make that we got to we have we have to broker this for a non disclosed price <laughs> we're in the driver's seat now Blower power all right good pitch at the bottom Boy. of the strike zone right there yeah good fastball 90 miles an hour Felix trying to have another quick inning probably should have ended it. Almost got him full count. Almost hit him with a changeup. Poor Felix in his last outing against the Tigers. He gave up three earned runs in the first inning. Four today. Really pitched well after that, going six innings, and the Mariners came back and won that game. Popped up. Freitas. Out of room. Still full count. Down by Dallas Braden. Closest seat in the house. He of the Mother's Day no hitter. Doing some TV work these days for the A's. Chapman eight pitches both of his plate appearances today. Seager plays the hop. Accurate throw to first base and Felix for the second straight inning retires his side in order. Four two A's top of the fourth. Join T-Mobile in showing your appreciation for all military and vets by sharing a photo or video using hashtag hats off for heroes. For each tweet or post, T-Mobile will donate one dollar to support veterans. Seeger Vogelback Gamble in the fourth inning. Nothing. Pops it foul. Two balls and a strike to Kyle, beginning the fourth inning. Mariners winning each of the first two games of this series by a run. Last night, a 1 0 game. Chance today for a sweep, but they'll have to come from behind to get it. Mm -hmm. 
Good count for Seeger. Mentioned the Mariners having to come from behind today. They've done that a few times this year. It's been a strength. Skyed into right field. Simeon, the shortstop, is over the shift, and nobody makes the catch. Miscommunication. Piscotti and Simeon. Now it gets all the way into shallow left field. Little League Day here at the Coliseum. Definitely a lack of communication. It'll be a base hit. Now, Daniel Vogelbach. That's a base hit for Kyle. Leadoff single. Tie and run at the plate. Strike one of Vogelback. Mike, it has gotten better for the A's, but this has been a storyline for Oakland for maybe the third straight year. For defense? Yeah. I mean, not an error that time, but miscommunication. Towards the middle of the pack this year. Up the middle. A flip over to second base in time to first. And that wipes away that leadoff single. Watch every out-of-market regular season game live at home in the office or on the go with MLB.tv. Your subscription includes MLB at bat premium, allowing you to watch live baseball on your favorite supported devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. That's the third double play the Mariners have bounced into. In four innings. Strike one to Gamble. Two in the dirt. This finds right field. Campbell's first hit today. He's having a really strong month. Hitting nearly 300. One for two today. Final game of the series once it's over with. Love Mariners post game presented by Alaska Airlines. Chance is always to hear from the skipper, also Felix. A's lead it four to two, two outs, a man aboard, top of the fourth. Here comes Romine. Romine with a walk, stolen base, has also scored a run.
Fouls it back one ball and one strike. And even though we've only been gone for three days we are eager to get back home. Begin a three game series tomorrow night against the Twins with Paxton up on the mound then the Rangers for four and the Rays for three. Nice long homestand for the guys. And that twin series, we already mentioned Paxton going tomorrow night. Saturday, Wade LeBlanc, who has pitched so well since joining the rotation in particular, Mike Leak on Sunday. We'll be seeing some good pitchers for the Twins. Fernando Romero tomorrow, Jake Odorizzi on Saturday, and then Jose Barrios. Final game of that series. Mariners got to Barrios earlier this year. Barely missing. Two balls and a strike to Romine. Two outs Mariners have gambled at first base after the single. Gamble safe. Now the 2 2. Keep trying to get him to chase the high fastball. It doesn't happen. For Romine, he walked his first time up. David Freitas waiting on deck. He's driven in a run today. That ends the top of the fourth. Gamble stranded. We go to the home half. Fourth, Stephen Piscotti sent to lead things off. Talked about this the other night. Stephen's mother, Gretchen, passing away recently because of ALS. You can go to youcaring.com slash Piscotti. Help donate funds. Help find a cure. The A's are matching a significant contribution to those donations. John Lester, you Darvish have each donated $10,000.
Some notable players. We talked to Bob Melvin about this the other day. It was such a public situation for Stephen Piscotti even before spring training began. He was traded from St. Louis to Oakland. He's a guy from the Bay Area. His family still lives here. And although the move made a lot of baseball sense for both teams, the Cardinals getting two of the upper end prospects from the A's. Seeger handles this routinely for round number one. And of course, for Oakland, they get a guy who has really been one of the better right fielders in the National League during his time with the Cardinals. Even though it made a lot of baseball sense, there was also obviously a lot of goodwill that went into it as well. Steven, a chance to be right there with his mom in her final days. And when we talked to Bob Melvin about it, he was the first to admit when you had seen Piscotti with the Cardinals, he was a guy who played with some emotion, played right. with some fire. Yep. And has been much more tame for Steven even before the passing of his mother here in his early days with the athletics. And I mean, Mike, there's been plenty of things written online about it. There has been a video series about it as well. Seeing Steven going home after a long day and night at the ballpark as this finds grass in center field off the bat of Fowler. One out and one on. And what he would do for his mother with his family and his siblings to help ease her in her final days. My goodness, you would not wish that on anyone. And you can understand why it was some long and tiring days for the entire Piscotti family. Well, it's great that the two organizations could work something out to make it that an easier situation for him to be at least close enough to be able to do the things that you're talking about, Aaron. So. I mean, if you're Bob, and we, you know, this is one of the things we asked Bob Melvin, of all the challenges that a manager can have. Yeah. I mean, that has got to be right there at the top. We've all seen players have loved ones pass, unfortunately, over the course of a lengthy baseball season. But to have something be that public, as it was for Gretchen Piscotti, I mean, if you're Bob Melvin and you've got a player who is struggling a little bit, first of all, you can absolutely understand why. Yes. What, can you, what can you really say? I, I think it's, it's probably a daily conversation just to check in with him and see how he's doing and if he needs anything. And if he needed more time, take it. There goes Fowler. He's got second base. Caught stealing last night late by Mike Zanino. Good jump this time. The A's are two for three with runners in scoring position so far. Now, Oakland is not a team that has been active on the base paths at all this year, but they do believe that with Fowler in the mix now, they will be more aggressive. That's very much a part of his skill set. Missing two and one. Well, the Mariners catching a couple of breaks in this series. First of all, Chris Davis on the disabled list with a groin injury, so we'll not see him at all in this series. And the other, the Mariners avoid the best starter for the A's, that is Sean Manaya. Now they saw Cahill in game one. He pitched well. This is Merrill Petit gets loose. But Manaya of no hitter fame. This in this series against the Mariners. Ground ball squibbing over to Segura. Gathers. Boy, two outs. Oh, another good pitch by Felix. Jams him. Now well, the first two starters in this series, you can see a career best last night for Marco Gonzalez. Seven innings, six and two thirds for Leak. Combined one earned run, Mike. And the command, the strikeouts to walks, fantastic. Both pitching deep. This rotation has been on a nice roll. Big difference in this series. Mariners winning the first two games by a run. 
But you're right, the rotation has really pitched well lately. Over the last nine games, an ERA right at two thereabouts. Maxwell, the number nine hitting catcher. Flew out to center field his last time up. Overall, the Mariners you look at their team ERA this month. 317. That's top 10 of the majors, seventh, in fact. It's been a strength. Kind of a funny swing. Fouls it away. Two and two. He's fooled on the curveball down out of the strike zone. Curveball's been a good pitch for Felix this afternoon. Missing full count. Leadoff man Matt Joyce waiting on deck with two outs. We'll go back off the bag. Do it. A flip to Felix. That ends the inning. Fowler stranded in scoring position. We'll be seeing Gene Segura when we get to the fifth. And thank you, Angie. David Freitas leads it off of the fifth for the Mariners, facing a new pitcher. Here's Merrill Petit. David with a base hit and an RBI his first time up. For Petit, 23 appearances, a 372 ERA. 29 innings, 19 strikeouts. Fastball 
Cutter curve change up for him. Average fastball 89 miles an hour. So not overpowering. He will mix it up. Paredes ahead, two and one. Sanino getting the day game off. Some tough luck last night for Mike. Home run robbed. times, yeah. And then a base hit taken away in left field on a diving catch by Canna. Chapman at third base. One down. Take a look at the Mariners calendar back home beginning tomorrow night. James Paxton up on the mound. Weekend series against the Twins. The Rangers come to town for four. And on Monday, that'll be a 110 first pitch. Some day baseball from Safeco Field. Homestand wrapping up the following weekend against the Tampa Bay Rays. Why well, not nobody aboard for Segura? Ruled strike one. Foul, 0 and 2. Off the hand, little looper drops in for a base hit. Segura, two for three. Fights that into right field. One out and one on. Pitched him away and then came back with the fastball in on his hands. Another Mariner that has been hot lately. Segura with 11 stolen bases. Guillermo was singled in a hard out to left field his last time up. Looking at ball one. Checking out of the hotel today, right around the same time that Guillermo was checking out, and kind of reminded me, as we have heard Guillermo's English progressing over the years, how difficult it is and how easy it is for us to lose sight of the fact that players like Guillermo from Cuba coming to the States with hardly any English speaking background and then having to yeah. navigate some of these this country's largest cities, and Guillermo coming along very nicely in that category. Well, I think the one thing that he has been lucky is he has some pretty good teammates that can help him with a lot of that stuff. But you're right. I mean, just the small things that you're talking about, getting your dry cleaning done, going out to get something to eat, things like that. Two and two. I'm sure, though, he's, he's pretty happy to be at the ballpark every day. No doubt about that. We have shared the story before about Manny Acta. One of the and it's the story is so much better when Manny tells it. Everything is when and Manny that's very, tells that's it. That's very true. But Manny when he came to the States as a Young, young minor league player for the first time, knowing no English whatsoever. In spring training, 
he and a number of his fellow countrymen would go out to dinner every night and they would go to Burger King and his manager or one of the coaches said the only way you eat is if you order in English. So it was chicken sandwich vanilla milkshake <laughs> for about a month. Already a strike out. There's that number two. Oh, took a lot off of that breaking ball at 76 miles an hour. Friday June 1st is Mariners pajama bottom night when the Mariners take on the race. They're comfy cozy and free to the first 10,000 fans. You can pick up your tickets right now at Mariners.com. Two out Segura aboard for Mitch Hanniger. First pitch strike. Segura, he was off the bat. Oh, he's he safe. It. He dropped the ball at first base. He was leaning towards second and catches a break. Did he ever? He was going to run. Mariners already have a stolen base, and he just knocks it out of his glove. Now, is that a fine line, Mike? In terms of going for the bag and also I, kind of aggressively hitting the glove, I don't think so. I think he's he's perfectly fine. He he was just fighting to get back to the base and he ended up elbowing the glove and knocking it out. I don't think there's any problem there. I mean, this isn't the A Rod. No, nothing. Fly close swat to at it. first no, base. No, nothing close to it. I think he's fine. No problem. Still has a big lead though. Nothing to two on Hanniger. Everything away. Just trying to change speeds on him. Only the White Sox more stolen bases in the American League so far this year. The one two. Strike three called. Out of the corner. That ends the top of the fifth.
Cards Baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Like I gotta say, I haven't seen the crews with all the U's before. That's a good look. Walking around I like the concourse it. here. Yeah, I like it. It's like Raul with seven U's. <laughs> Making the rounds for two A's. Joyce leads it off a single and a pop up so far today for Joyce a lead off hitter. Boy right at the knees ruled ball two. To right, Hanniger backpedaling to the track. One down. Consider your night teed up on Saturday when the Mariners host the Twins at 710. The first 10,000 fans will receive a free t shirt featuring speedy leadoff man D. Gordon. It's all brought to you by Alaska Airlines. Reserve your seat at Mariners.com. Like, I think we were both in agreement when we heard the news when we got to town before game one of the series that D. Gordon was placed on the disabled list because of a fractured toe. And we were both looking at each other going, well, that's a month. Right. How encouraging is it that Scott said that they believe, they hope, that it will be just a minimum 10 days until he's back in the lineup for the Mariners. Well, I spoke to Scott about it yesterday. He seemed pretty optimistic that that was going to be the case, which is great news for the Mariners. I mean, bottom line, even if it's a couple of days longer than they originally thought of 10 days, even if, it'll, let's say, let's get crazy, Mike, let's say it's 13 days, that's still a lot shorter than we originally thought it would be. By a couple of weeks. <laughs> One and two on Simeon. Thing about that too with with D is he's going through all that pain. You could see him limping around, but yet it was him. He stole second base and ends up scoring the go-ahead run, winning run for the Mariners. Feeling that way, and you could tell how beat yeah, up he was. You could tell. Off the hands foul, still two and two. And who knows how long he was dealing with that, right? But the Mariners can keep winning ball games while he's getting healthy. That's a plus plus. Get him back in the lineup and continue to win games. I mean, really, I, I would not have even been able to make it to the refrigerator with a fractured toe. <laughs> Most wouldn't, Aaron. Let alone stealing Don't second feel base. Badly about that. <laughs> Most would not. One out, nobody on. Felix's payoff. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Two outs. Right on the outside corner. Now, Second Talked about he struggled through the first inning, but his command has been excellent since then, and he has everything going. His curveball is change up, a little slider even. A lot of strikeout total so far today for Felix, just two. He struck out seven A's each of his first two starts this year against Oakland. Lowry the opposite way. Gamble going back on it, spinning, and he's able to hold on to it to make the catch to end the inning. Side sat down in order for the third time in five innings by Felix.
Top of the six for two A's. Mike, let's go back a couple of years. One of the great Nelson Cruz home runs in this ballpark against Shamanaya. Uh, higher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in one of the football what? suites. What are the, the chances that that fan was sitting up there with his glove thinking he was going to get a baseball? <laughs> it's never happened until right then with Nelson. He leaves off the sixth. One of the more memorable Nelson Cruz home runs, and that's saying something. You know, it was a year, I think it was a year ago, Mike, where we kind of canvassed the Mariners clubhouse, asking some of the guys their most memorable Nelson Cruz home run. <laughs> we asked Scott, that was the one that Scott mentioned, by the way. I would have too. One of the guys we asked was Kyle Seeger. After our Kyle's had a good view on a lot of those. And he referenced one before, and this is why he's had a good view, because he's been on deck watching a lot of them. He referenced a Nelson Cruz home run the year before he came to the Mariners, which was kind of breaking the rules. But he hit one, Cruz did off of Felix. Now one year he was with Baltimore. It was at Safeco Field. It was a line drive, a laser over the left field wall, and Kyle said, go back and watch the third baseman on that. Meaning, go back and watch Kyle, Kyle Seeger. Yeah. And Kyle left his feet. He jumped, <laughs> thinking he might be able to catch it. Down on strikes. I think I would probably vote for the one here. We had a couple in Minnesota that were impressive also. Third deck, you know, high off the batter's eye. Into the restaurant, dead center field. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had one two years ago when you talk about meaningful home runs. Foul ball off of Seeger's bat. Second to last game of the season against the A's. A game the Mariners really needed in order to help stay alive in a wild card hunt. And that was when he was doing it on essentially one forearm. He was really banged up at the end of that year. I'd really like to see the Mariners score a couple more runs. Felix. Right around 80 pitches. He has another inning, maybe two. Over to the point of the shift. Two outs. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Seattle Mariners and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Mariners. Now, Mr. and Mrs. Hanniger, they're in the front row. Two up, two down for Daniel Vogelback. One out to right field. Piscotti comes in to make the catch, and the side is retired in order.
A's have a 4-2 lead. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Take a look at our Verizon player profile. Mariners will be seeing Jose Barrios. Well, the Mariners get back home, taking up Twins' his last two starts. Just three earned over 15 and a third. Oh, if they walk to strikeout numbers. First pitch curve missing to Olsen. Mike, it was a couple of years ago when we were at Target Field that I talked to Barrios about a couple of different things, mainly his career and how good it has been early on, but also about a friend of his, and that is Edwin Diaz. Segura, who has left a couple of steps. Comes out number one. Those two guys, very familiar with each other growing up in Puerto Rico. And I was asking him about Edwin, and he told me at least his memories of Edwin as a kid. Edwin Diaz's nickname in Puerto Rico, which I think is one of the best nicknames I've heard in a while. I'm going to guess it's not sugar. It is not sugar. Okay. Gasolina. <laughs> okay. I mean, how great is that? That is very fitting. That applies. What a year he is having. We were looking at the numbers on that man's slider. Depending on which source you look at, baseball savant, Brooks baseball, even if you take the high number, Mike, he's given up two hits on his slider. Two. On the year. On the year. Yeah. <laughs> Batting 025 on that pitch. Only well, has both the saves in this series, and he's faced the minimum for the two innings he's worked, and has five strikeouts. Disappointing it's not six, but we'll take five. As a hitter, it's probably a win if you put him in play. One one to Chapman. Quickly skimming out to Seeger. Couple of ground ball outs. We want you to join the conversation for up to date game information and live interaction. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Check us out and stay connected with Root Sports. Well, for Felix, again, tough first inning, but since then, there's only been one base runner, one hit. Dustin Fowler with a base hit in the fourth. And a lot of ground ball outs. Ball one to Piscotti. Working very efficiently, too. You can see the 31 pitches in the first. It has calmed since then, to say the least. Felix is 1 1. Back to Seeger. Backhand near the line. Long throw. Another 1 2 3 inning, the fourth time in the last five frames. Fun, spun by Felix.
Seattle Mariners baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by CenturyLink, connecting you to the power of the digital world. By BNSF, sponsor of the BNSF Blast. By Jack of the Box, try the new Cholula Buttery Jack, part of the Buttery Jack family, only at Jack of the Box. And by Money Tree, proud to make a donation to Mariners Care for every Mariners win. Very pleasant day by the Bay. Bottom third of the order coming up here for the Mariners. It begins with Gamble. And two. Mariners winners of each of their last five entering today. What a month it has been for the Mariners. Only the Brewers have more wins this month in the majors. They have 14. The Mariners have 13. Down on strikes. Back to the Ford Sports Desk. We say hello to Angie. Here's Andrew Romine, one out, nobody on. Through the right side, a one-out single. Second time Andrew has been on base. He walked back in the second, stole second base, and scored. How about it? Number 36, David Freitas. Finds right field. That brings up Freitas. First pitch bouncing to Simeon. It's the fourth double play the Mariners have bounced into today, and it takes us to the stretch. Stretch your imagination with Washington's lottery. Play today. Mariners have already secured a series win here in Oakland. They'll need to come from behind for a series sweep. We go to the bottom of the seventh. New pitcher up on the mound for the Mariners. Here the final line for Felix, Mike. Or Felix, six innings, five hits, four runs. They were earned. All of them in the first inning. One walk, a couple of strikeouts, 89 pitches, 52 strikes. Thought maybe they'd try to get another inning out of Felix, but that's going to be his day. Takes us to our Beacon Plumbing call to the pen. The former A, Ryan Cook, up on the mound. There's two appearances so far, a couple of innings, two strikeouts. Hasn't walked anybody. Opponents seen 
167 his average fastball 96 miles an hour. There's a slider to go with it. After the first inning Felix was just a ground ball machine. Figure he threw 31 pitches in the first and did some good work to get through the next five innings to keep his pitch count to a total of 89. I mean, he faced one over the minimum yeah. over his final five innings. We'll have a chance here from Scott on Mariners post game presented by Alaska Airlines as to what went into that decision. Meanwhile, you'd have to think that there are plenty of people today around the Coliseum have a smile on their face looking at Ryan Cook up yeah. on the mound. And I'll start with the A's back in 2012, put up some just terrific numbers in total 200 strikeouts. 200 appearances. Missing over two years in the majors because of Tommy John and then other injuries as well, some associated with the elbow operation. A good fastball right there at 96 miles an hour. See his resume with the A's. Fowler stays alive. Fowler the rookie two for two today including an RBI back in the first now Cook has certainly been impressive in his first couple of appearances out of the Mariners bullpen pitching here in the seventh. Routine pop up left side. Seager fighting the sky a little bit. Wins that battle, one down. Let's check in with the Ford Sports Desk, bringing Bill Kruger. Bill, we have, as you have heard, been really impressed by Felix ever since that first inning. What impressed you the most? Bill, that, that being said, I, I agree with you. And he, we saw a lot of ground ball outs from him after he was able to get through the first 89 pitches total. Were you a little bit surprised that they didn't run him back out there for another inning? I'd be curious about your thoughts overall Bill just with the starting rotation and how well they've pitched and and their ability to pitch deeper into the ballgame Felix again after the first inning end up going six innings today. Now batting the catcher.
What have you made so far of this story of Ryan Cook? It has just been spectacular. This is only his third appearance, but he is throwing the baseball. Bill, like he hasn't skipped a beat. There's no question about that. Bill, thank you as always. We'll hear more from you on Mariners post game, presented by Alaska Airlines as Cook carves through the order. Four two A's. We open up the top of the eighth. Well, join us for Nelson Cruz Pop Collectible Night, presented by Fun Co. It's on Saturday, June second. The first twenty thousand fans will receive this unique collectible of the baseball crushing DH, with twenty three lucky fans taking home the special edition version of the boomstick in all silver. For tickets, visit Mariners.com. Rays will be in town for that one. Lou Trevino on the mound. He will work the eighth. Fastball cutter curveball for him. 14 appearances on the year. A 0 0.52 ERA. Opponents hitting 206. Average fastball 97 miles an hour. Swing and strike one to Segura. Towards the bullpen. Olsen a long run for it. Good effort. One two though. Segura with a couple of hits. Scored a run in the first inning. Saw Ryan, he Ryan Healy last night try to make a similar catch. Segura behind. Right field dropping in for a base hit. Three hit day, Gene Segura. This is about the time the Mariners get things going. 
Silver Bullet Saturday is new and improved. Join the party in the pen on Saturday. Download the Coors Light Rewards app and win exciting prizes. Plus, How fans 21 and older get $8 20-ounce Coors Light drafts at the Coors Light Rail Bar up until first pitch. Aaron, I was talking to Edgar yesterday and asking him why this club is so good in late inning, seventh inning or later. And he mentioned their power, 23 home runs, eight of them have either tied or put the Mariners ahead. But he also said that they're also a very good fastball hitting club. Well, this is a pretty good fastball right here. Segura lining it into right field, but Trevino is average fastball at 97. Kind of funny how that works out. You see it every year. Some teams, as a collective group, not to paint with too broad of a stroke, but better at hitting the off-speed stuff. Stuff. Some teams better at hitting the fastball. And we've seen it when the Mariners play the Astros, and we see all of those breaking balls. You can see the numbers for Heredia late in ball games. Brushes him back at 97, three and 0. Bradford and Zipchinski getting loose. Mark a former A. Three and one. For Gene, that was his major league leading ninth game with at least three hits. Couple of men on base. Trevino a single now walk. And some good speed aboard for Hanniger. Mitch looking for his first hit. One for two. Trevino just took them out. Looks like the A's bullpen beginning to move around a little bit. Blake Trinan going to get loose. A's closer. Speaking of a good fastball. So Segura at second, Heredia at first base, Hanniger looking for his first hit. 0 for 2 with a walk. Starts him off with a cutter at 92. <laughs> Behind nothing and two. Hanniger missing last night's game after being hit just above the wrist in game one. Back in the lineup today. And he is the go ahead run at the plate with two on and nobody out in the eighth. Chapman, a low stab. Steps on third, throw to, first, to second rather, and safe at first base. Pretty quick work started by Chapman and Hanniger able to make it to first base just in time. We've seen him make some great plays. Backhanded play, step on the base, get rid of it with something on it. Pretty good defense.
Ball on to Cruz. Even though the Mariners have won the first two games, it's been difficult for them to hit with runners in scoring position. Including today, they are two for 20 in the series. Now, such a positive trend for the Mariners early in the yeah. season, really throughout April. Five double plays the Mariners have bounced into today. Cruz the tie and run. Behind in the count one and two. Back to back cutters. Field drop in over Lowry in for a base hit. Hanniger paused for a moment. Now Jets into third. Mariners in business with two outs. Runners on the corners. Looked like another cutter off the plate away. It is. But Nelson able to get just enough of it towards the end of the bat to pick up a base hit. And Bob Melvin out of the dugout quickly going to get his closer. Trinan coming on here with two outs and two out of the eighth inning. Seeger, who since the start of the game today has been given, has been credited with an RBI in last night's game. On to hit here with runners on the corners, two outs facing the A's closer, Blake Trinan. 18 appearances, 10 saves, a 1-1-4 ERA, 30 strikeouts and 23 and two-thirds. Opponents hitting 209 has only given up the one home run. Fastball slider on his average fastball, 97 miles an hour. Hanniger at third base, Cruz the tie and run at first. Seeger the go ahead. <laughs> Lefties have had a better time against Trinan than righties. Not that they're having a party against him. 233, only one extra base hit. Only home run he's allowed has been to a righty. Levels the count. Nick Vincent getting loose in the pen. Oh. 
Trinan has been especially stingy this month has not allowed an inherited runner to score has allowed just one run this month in 10 appearances. Kyle getting a couple of fastballs at 96 miles an hour. Both of them on the outer half of the plate. The one two. Clubbed into right field, base hit. Hanniger scoring, Cruz galloping into third, Seeger motors to second. The inning continues, and the Mariners are now within a run. I was talking about hitting with runners in scoring position, and a clutch base hit from Kyle, the double. And the Kyle, the potential go ahead run. It's on a slider after a couple of fastballs. He's able to keep it fair. Daniels Vogelbach. Two outs, two in scoring position for Vogelbach. Tie and run now, 90 feet from home. Go back, get in a break, ball one. Cruz at third, Seeger at second base. The 1 0. Off the plate, two and nothing. Good count for him. Typically, he'll go with a fastball away. It's a strike on the inside corner. Next well, set up away, but it was on the inside corner. Now the 2 1. Three balls in a strike. Gamble would be next. Nelson taking his lead. Getting about halfway down the line because the third baseman Chapman is all the way over in the shortstop position. Anything that gets away from Maxwell at all, he'll have a chance to score. Ranging over to the gap, center fielder wants it. He has it. Now the Mariners strand a couple. They do get a run thanks to the RBI double by Seeker. A's by one.
look at our Columbia Bank difference of the game way back in the first inning off of Felix Stephen Piscotti. Ends up driving in a couple of runs on this double just out of the reach of Heredia as he crashes into the wall. Four run inning. All four runs today for the A's. As we go to the bottom of the eighth, the former athletic Mark Sapchinski on to work for the Mariners. Sinking fastball at 92 miles an hour and a slider. 15 appearances. He's struck a little bit early on here. Eight and a half ERA. Six in the third. As far as his innings go. Six walks. Giving up a couple of home runs. On the first pitch. Right by the bag at first base. Fogelback handles that himself. Quick out. And that'll be it. Ah, to be a lefty. <laughs> One pitch. Mark, you did great. Chasing Bradford going to come into the ball game. We'll see you on the plane. We'll step aside. <laughs> Of relievers, their day is done. 4 3 A's, one out bottom of the eighth. Join us this Saturday for an exciting MLS matchup. Tune in at 10 30 p.m. Pacific as the Portland Timbers travel to take on the Colorado Rapids. And stay tuned after the match for our live post game show. For your local programming schedule, visit rootsports.com. Jason Bradford on to work with one out, nobody on, facing Marcus Simeon. Missing for ball one. 14 appearances, a 3 0 record, 2 6 ERA. One was hitting 200 against him. Fastball at 92 miles an hour and a slider. One and two. The quality slider right on the outside corner at the knees. Oof. Two and two. All the way from Bradford. Swings right through it, 92 knee high. Out number two. Now, buddy, second baseman, number eight, Jay Lowry. 
pitches in a row right at the knees. Working down in the zone. Two outs here in the home eighth. Brings up Jed Lowry. When we get to the ninth, Camel, Romine, and Freitas will be due up. Mariners have Zanino and Healy on the bench. Some notable guys with some pop. Also Beckham and Andrioli today. Behind 2 0 to Jet Lowry. Two outs, nobody on. For this 2 1. Anthony's again, levels it out 2 and 2. And back of Felix today, it has been Cook, Zipchinski, and now Brantford. Gets him swinging. Elevated fastball. Sachinski and Bradford retire the side in order. Mariners out of their final three outs. Their fair share of double plays today. They have they have tied a club record, Mike. They have bounced to five twin killings. That's been tough. A lot of ground balls right at the infielders. First pitch shrank to Gamble. Talked about their struggles hitting with runners in scoring position in this series. It's been a strength for them overall this year, but a tough series. Fights this one away. Left field towards the line. Joyce. Well, we anticipated a pinch hitter or two, and we'll see one right here. There comes Ryan Healy. Oh, I think we'll see too. Mike Zanino is out on deck. He will bat for Freitas. Mike with the only home run in this series. Ryan 
I feel pretty confident Mike that if you go through and look at most series in baseball this year of at least three games probably pretty rare to find a three game series with just a home run. No, I would agree with that. Nick Benson getting loose again just in case. And Mike hit his home run on the first night which was the toughest conditions for sure. Really a line drive home run out to left. In the rain. Healy the tying run. Trying to sting his former team. One and two. Ninety nine miles an hour. We'll say again how did Trinan ever struggle with the Nationals. The one two coming. Ninety nine elevated two outs. You know, and worth noting, Mike, this is something we've been talking about. Mariners pitching, holding things to yeah. set up a chance. Mariners pitchers have retired the last 14 A's hitters and 21 of the last 22. Keeping this game close. Starting Mike off with a slider at 90. One and one. Mariners down to their final out today. So they know the tying run at the plate. And down to their final strike. Two. Ball game. Trinan, what turns out to be a four out save, stunts the Mariners from sweeping the eighth. They do take the series, though. They do take the series, and a lot of good pitching from the Mariners in this series. Go out on the road, a short trip for them. They get to go back home now for a nice 10 game homestand after winning this series. Hope to see you tomorrow night at Safeco Field. James Paxton up on the mound. 7-10 the first pitch. We are on the air at 6-30. Mariners postgame presented by Alaska Airlines. It begins right now. Bill, Angie, it's all yours.